again, this is also similar to what we have learned from structural analysis or in our everyday life. Imagine that, suppose you have a, uh, a chopstick, right? You're trying to bend it. If you bend the chopstick with a single curvature, that's easier to bend it. But if you want to bend it in the double curvature, which is in the following case here, you have to provide additional force. So that's the physical implementations of this example. And we will not be able to, to solve many examples, uh, many multiple degrees of freedom systems, but this is one of the fields in this class. Most of the cases, we only have one degree of freedom for us to solve. Is that clear for this example? Yeah. Okay. Uh, any questions? So is this like a kind of like a probability that it'll buckle like this? Or do you know for certain that if you apply mm. that critical load, it'll buckle? How do you say it's going to buckle? And this is not a probability analysis. From this analysis, we determine the, what we call the uh, two different buckling loads associated with individual buckling modes. And from this analysis, the lowest value for the buckling force determines the actual buckling load. So what I'm saying is, unless doing the buckling, you find a way to prohibit the columns to deform like this. Like what? Like, again, I'm just saying hypothetically. Suppose our column of the regional structure is like this, which is the one we consider. Right? Suppose you have something like this. And you apply the force right here. But somehow, somehow that you build some kind of structure and the structure actually some, has some kind of boundary condition like this. And also another boundary condition like this. Suppose there's another structure which is like this. Which means that, which means that kinematically speaking, you do not allow the first buckling mode to occur. You allow the point C to only move upward and point B to only move downward. In this case, you, are, you force the structure to buckle, not in the lower mode, but in the higher mode. Only in this case, the higher mode buckling will happen. Otherwise, mechanically speaking, we predict that this, if there's no additional constraint, that means both points B and C are free to move either upward or downward. In that case, we predict that buckling though is gonna be this value and no probabilities associated with it. This is gonna be the buckling load as we predicted. Even if we applied that, like the larger critical P all at one time, it would still try to buckle? You will not, you will not move to this value. Just use the speaker to try to imagine that what's going to happen, use this one, mm -hmm. right? When you start increasing the load, the first value is going to hit is not the higher value. It's not a higher buckling mode, but it's a lower value for the buckling mode, which is a KS over L. And that means before you predict that the structure can actually buckle in this kind of shape, you will already buckle in the lower mode. Okay, thank you. Sure. Any other questions? Professor, so what happened if the value of P between the K L over uh, K over L or and uh, three K over L. So let's say if we have that column press it and then we load it up to K over L and then pass it and we release the press. Mm -hmm. So what what's gonna happen? If you use and another situation you mentioned about the bracing. That's actually what happens in reality. Sometimes some civil engin structure engineers can predict the happening of certain buckling modes. And to prevent that from happening, 
structural engineers do use some brazers to, to do that. And should it be the case, it is possible that in this case, suppose you put some kind of constraint here. That means I don't want the structure to, to move. There's a spring element here, another spring element here, just to make sure that it will not move in the first buckling mode. If that's the case, then the higher buckling mode will happen. That's from our analysis. So the meaning of this example is to show you that for multi-degree multi of freedom system, there are multiple bu buckling modes. Of course, to make sure that your design is safe, you will certainly want to examine all possible buckling modes, right? You want to see that if there's no boundary constraints, what will be my loading compared to the actual applied force? What we do to check that whether the loading, whether the structure will buckle or not, is by compare the buckling force. In this case, we found the buckling force by this. This is our PCR. And you will use this PCR to check with the actual load. So remember, PCR is inherent. You apply force, it's external. Verification of buckling is to compare the inherent buckling resistance with the externally applied force. So you will check, just like what we've been talking about, that your force will be used to compare with the PCR. The concept in this is PCR is internal. And the force you apply, this is external. If your external forces keep increasing and beyond this internal capacity for buckling, and then your, your structure will buckle. I hope I answer your question. Uh, so, so you mean any volume past the PCR is gonna buckle? No, no, that's not what I meant. What I meant is that if you find a way to bypass, you come back to this figure here. If you find a way to bypass this one by using any kind of, like I said, uh, different kind of bracing designs to make sure that this buckling node will not happen. In reality, it's going to pass this buckling mode, but it's going to keep increasing it until it hits the second buckling mode. So you will not buckle from here until it hits the next one, which is this point. Okay. But, okay. Yeah. But should not be the case, if that's not the case, you will buckle at the first buckling mode, which is the lowest one. All right. Uh, I don't think I have time to finish the next example, so I'm going to stop here. If you have questions, you can stay. Otherwise, I will see you next week. All right. So, Professor, you're going to be posting these notes somewhere, or? I will either find a way to send it to you and have somebody to help me. I can certainly send that to, uh, which one is easier? Right now I'm more familiar with the uh, SIS because that way I can make sure that every one of you gets the file. Doesn't matter, yeah, that would work. That way it's in the email. All right. Thank you. Sure. Thank you, Professor. Have a good night. You're welcome, have a good night.